Hey guys, welcome to module four. Just to refresh your memory, in the last module we discussed how exercise, consistency, and light exposure affect our sleep quality. In this module, we're going to focus on consumption and specifically how the things we put into our body affect our ability to get deep sleep and ultimately feel restored. Intuitively, the notion that uh, the things we put into our body directly affect our performance um, isn't, isn't anything new, but I think it is important to understand uh, because a lot of people don't think about how it affects our sleep. So there's plenty to know here, but I really want to start the conversation around stim stimulants. You know, likely the most ubiquitous stimulant, especially in the workplace, is caffeine. And this is manifested in coffee or soda, um, but there's just a few things you need to know here. I always tell people to try to limit their caffeine consumption to one or two cups or, or glasses of, of coffee or soda a day. Ideally, zero is the best, but if you're going to have some, keep it to one at most two. And, and just, to, just to give you an idea, the caffeine from a cup of coffee has the ability to stay in our system for up to 16 hours, which is pretty crazy. The half-life of that coffee, which means you know 50% of uh, the caffeine is still in our bodies, is about eight hours. And it's at that 50% threshold that the effect of caffeine on our bodies really seems to taper off. So considering I go to bed around 11 each night, I try to finish my last cup of coffee no later than 2 p.m. because that means that I've given myself enough room to, to have that less than 50% threshold um, be in place when I go to bed, which ultimately, again, is going to help me achieve a deeper sleep. So if you're going to have that cup of coffee, make sure the last one's in the early afternoon um, so that it doesn't affect your sleep. And if, if you really want to be safe, the best thing you can do is just have it in the morning. So it's it's important to realize that it's, it's not just coffee but and, and soda, but there's a lot of other things that have caffeine in it as well. Um, chocolate, aspirin, even gum. All of these things have the ability to have an effect on our ability to achieve deep sleep. So you want to be mindful of that and you want to avoid them. One cool app I've used to really monitor and, and get an understanding of my caffeine consumption is this iPhone app called Caffeine Zone 2. And essentially what it does is I'm able to indicate when I consumed caffeine, what that was, uh, whether it was coffee, tea, or gum, um, how much of it there was, and how fast I drank it. And I'll actually be able to go ahead and see the life of that caffeine within my body. And this has been just a really cool way of, of just understanding and internalizing caffeine. And, and another, some other cool things you can do with the app is indicate when, you, when you're going to sleep and the, amount of caf the maximum amount of caffeine that you want in your body at that time when you're going to sleep is. And what this does is, is it if I'm gonna consume some caffeine at let's say four o'clock and, and by that time it's still gonna be in my body at 50% uh, when I go to sleep, it'll actually alert me and say, hey Scott, don't have this caffeine. So you know this is not only, like I mentioned, a really good way to understand caffeine and how it affects your body, but also to monitor your consumption so that doesn't perfect your, affect your ability to go to sleep. So let's talk about alcohol. Surprise, surprise, when we consume alcohol, it affects our sleep quality. You know, don't, don't think that because those two glasses of wine before you go to sleep make you tired, that you're, you're doing yourself a favor when it comes to sleep quality. The bottom line is that the consumption of alcohol actually suppresses our ability to get not only deep sleep, but also rapid eye movement sleep. So you want to try to stay away from it if possible. And, and this is why you might have had a big drinking night and subsequently gotten 8, 9, 10 hours of sleep, but you still felt terrible the next day. Again, it's it's not the amount of sleep that affects how you feel. It's it's the quality of sleep. Um, so, so one reason why alcohol limits deep sleep is because it dehydrates you. And we'll dive deeper into the implications of dehydration on deep sleep soon. But just for now, know that dehydration is not good for deep sleep and alcohol contributes to that. Another problem is, is the sugar in alcohol. 
Maybe you've woken up in the middle of the night and can't get back to sleep and you find your heart racing after you've been drinking. This might be because the sugar within the alcohol, alcohol is actually being released into your bloodstream at that point, which is making, making that feeling uh, possible. So the best thing you can do uh, is not drink. Realistically, for a lot of us, that's not necessarily what we want to do if, if alcohol is something that you enjoy. But even then, there's still a few things you can do to mitigate the damage. First thing is just keeping it to one or two drinks or less. Once you have more than one or two drinks, you're going to start to experience a lot of the side effects on your sleep that aren't good. So if you can keep it under two, that's a, that's a great thing. The second is, is, is try to make sure that that last drink is no later than about one and a half to two hours before you're going to go to sleep. And the reason is, is because alcohol to a certain extent is actually a stimulant before it acts as a depressant, um, which you know might be why after you have a drink, your energy level increases. Um, so you know, after that first hour, um, it actually does become a depressant uh, and makes it easier to go to sleep. So you know, I like to give myself a window for that reason, as well as you know, give give yourself an opportunity to hydrate with water. If if the last if if you have two hours since your last drink, that's going to be ample time to drink glasses of water, which again will um, help you be more hydrated. And this is a perfect opportunity to dive deeper into hydration uh, and and why it's important for us to achieve deep sleep. When you're asleep, our body still needs to execute processes that require energy. When we're dehydrated, we actually have to allocate all of this energy uh, internally to other things to overcompensate for our lack of hydration. And some of the resources that were dedicated to processes that allow us to get deep sleep, like body temperature regulation, don't receive as many resources, uh, which is why it's so important to make sure you're well hydrated. Now that we have an understanding of, of the importance of hydration, let's talk about you know, more tangibly, how much should I be drinking? I aim for, personally, I aim for two liters a day and sometimes more, but a minimum of two liters a day. And, and one way to think of it is those liter soda bottles, um, that comes up to about 67 ounces, two of them. So, you know, just two of those is, is really what I'm aiming for. And, and it's a very simple way that you can achieve this is get one of those big water jugs or plastic soda bottles, determine how many ounces or liters are in that and just calculate from there how many bottles of that you'll need to drink by the end of the day. And I've found this is much easier than trying to add up a bunch of ounces from a variety of sources. Um, it's much easier if you can just measure it and I, I only have to drink these this many bottles a day. And you know, hydration is not only a great practice for sleep, but for general health. So you're going you're gonna to see a ton of other positive benefits uh, from this as well. So the thing is though, is, is actually hydrating at the wrong time can actually inhibit your sleep. Pretty obviously, the more you drink, the more you need to go, you're gonna need to go to the bathroom. And if you're waking up three times a night because you need to go to the bathroom, it's not, not gonna be a good thing for, for your overall sleep and restfulness. So what I try to do is limit the amount of consumption within that first hour and a half before I go to sleep. I try to keep it to eight ounces, and what this does is give my body enough time to go to the bathroom so I won't be waking up throughout the night to use the restroom and, and subsequently messing up my sleep. And if, and if you're a guy and you're still waking up to go to the bathroom, even though you're not drinking a ton, this actually might be to, due to prostate issues. Um, I actually, you know, waking up constantly to go to the bathroom is a sign that something might be wrong with your prostate. And I definitely recommend going to see a doctor to get this fixed. But in the meantime, if you want a quick solution, I highly recommend this vitamin Sol Palmetto. Uh, I actually started taking this when I found myself using the restroom more than I wanted to in, in the evenings. And, and after I started taking it, which was recommended by my doctor, uh, I, I saw all of those problems and symptoms going away. And, and just a quick note, um, when if you do wake to go up the bathroom, you want to try to avoid coming in direct contact with light. I actually, um, instead of turning on all the lights in my hallway or bathroom, I actually, oops, 
I actually use uh, just like have a mini flashlight next to my bed in the event that I wake up and use that to, to go to the bathroom. And another alternative is you know dim hall guide lights or even even a night light. Okay, so let's real quick uh, chat about food because this plays a huge role in our ability to achieve uh, high quality sleep. Similar to hydration, digestion is a process that requires energy. Large amounts of blood flow are, are directed towards the digestive system after a big meal. And what this means is that's less blood flow uh, means less energy available for the brain. And low blood flow in the brain during sleep actually means poor sleep quality because the brain conducts all of our sleep processes. So what, what this means is, is that the more demand we put in our digestive system while we sleep, the rest, less resources we can allocate towards our brain and, and all the other things that make sure that we achieve a restful sleep. So what I try to do is two things. A, avoid foods that are taxing to my digestive system and, and specifically before I'm going to sleep. And these are things, basically things that are high in saturated fat, um, like foods with sugar or, or simple carbs like white bread. You want to avoid these. Um, and B, I eat lightly in the evenings and, and avoid eating too close to bedtime. And again, this is because I want to make sure that there's not too much of a cost on my digestive system. And I want to give my body a, a chance to digest properly before I go to bed so that I can have all that energy uh, that makes sure I get a deep, restful sleep allocated towards that instead of having to execute uh, digestive processes. And if you are going to eat a big meal in the evenings, um, what I'd say is, is you want to give yourself at least four hours to, di to digest it. That's how long it typically takes to digest a, a big meal. And, and while we're talking about this, um, I just want to talk about something that's a little uh, near and dear to, to my heart. Um, there's there's some people out there that claim that spicy foods can be bad for your sleep. I love spicy foods. I literally dump hot sauce and spicy seasonings on everything I eat. Um, and I just don't think that this is really a viable claim. Um, people that have eaten a large meal with spices late often have mistook the spices instead of the fact that they ate late and didn't give themselves enough time to digest um, as the root of their poor sleep. So if, if you, the bottom line is if you give yourself an adequate digestion window, whether you're using spices on your food shouldn't really matter. Um, so if anybody ever tells you that, I, I personally, I haven't had any experience myself and I, I can't find any conclusive evidence that this is uh, something that you should believe. The last thing I want to cover in this module is sleep aids. So you've probably seen or maybe even taken a sleep aid like melatonin or Tylenol PM or, or even Ambien. Um, sleep supplements are definitely a short-term fix and something you want to generally avoid, in my opinion. Uh, they definitely help you go to sleep. However, they have a lot of side effects and, and they can actually leave chemicals in your body which stay there for in your blood for up to six days. And, and the side effects of these chemicals are things like daytime drowsiness, nausea, blurred vision, um, loss of appetite, and in some cases even frequent urination, which we already know uh, doesn't help, doesn't really help us sleep. So, and, and, I'll, and I'll just real quick talk a little bit more extensively about this. Most sleeping pills like artificial melatonin, the way they work is they actually depress the activity of the brain and force lower brain waves. And, you know, while you may get seven or eight hours of sleep, the sleep will be very low quality, um, leaving you with side effects that can last for days that I spoke for. And, and it's the same thing where, you know, you want to avoid things that alter our brain function normally during sleep, and, and mel melatonin actually does that. Um, so generally, you know, I think these should be avoided at all costs. Just like getting in you know, amazing physical shape, there's really no shortcut or bulletproof solution. It just, it just comes down to building great habits. So this, this completes the fourth module, and, uh, you know, Hopefully, this just provides you with an understanding that the things we put into our body and, and when we do it have our ha, have a tremendous impact on our ability to achieve a high quality sleep. In the next module, we're going to be talking about how our sleep environment can influence our qual sleep quality. 
and I'm going to be giving you some specific techniques, strategies, and practices you can use to make sure that you're giving yourself the best chance to achieve a great sleep. See you then.